Um, how then can we understand the recent um, events with regard to our ambassador in Geneva, widely perceived to be uh, on account of his partiality to the defense and support of the 13th Amendment? Well, I don't know the rationale behind that. I mean, I was is told it not last disturbing, week Rajiv, that because what is the message we are sending I think, to I think West? Part of the problem about that, as you know perfectly well, is that a few months before there was an allegation that he was being transferred, or rather, his contract oh, was being was, cut short yeah, yeah. because of uh, too much animosity to the West. I think part of the problem there is that our ambassador to Geneva, he's one of the most able people I know and one of the most highly principled. Um, tends to attract jealousy simply because of his abilities. And a number of people, for a number of personal reasons, might have then argued uh, a theoretical case. Um, and perhaps it was felt that controversy was not appropriate. As I said, I still think that the final decisions to have been made uh, in issuing a letter would have been made by the foreign ministry. And as far as I know, the foreign ministry and all its personnel are emphatically in favor of devolution mm. and perhaps would want to go further. So the particular decision made, uh, I don't think, affects the 13th Amendment. I think one of the problems but of the last two weeks, can I go back yeah. to, you see, there was a controversy about the 13th Amendment. And in my own way, I wrote to both controversialists saying, you know, why are you going on arguing about a matter that's no longer relevant for the simple reason that the president has made it very clear that in, June, in January 2008, he got his whole government party to agree to devolution based on provincial councils. But on that point, on that point, I think we've, we've read the Hindu interview. We know where the president stands with regard to this. In, with regard to optics, to, UN, to yeah. use a very UN phrase, uh, the perception of Sri Lanka's commitment towards a political uh, process, in as much as its commitment to the war, was simply not questioned. I mean, there was visible commitment uh, also on your part in supporting the government in that regard. Um, on the 18th of May, I ha happen to remember the date because I read it um, uh, this morning, um, in one of your essays, uh, in a characteristic signature cadence, you argued very uh, forthrightly for a re-evaluation re of our international relations uh, in terms of realigning it, not just with the West, but with other powers. Now, in that broader perspective, um, one would imagine that the government would be sensitive post-war to the signals that it sent out uh, to this wide international community. Uh, and I come back then to that question that the recall of a fairly senior, very well-known, proven figure in international community about defending the government uh, might send very wrong signals. Of course, it could send wrong signals, is this, which is obvious that, in the fact that is that that's jeopardizing the way you, is that jeopardizing your well, work? Well, I think that's the way you've interpreted it. Therefore, it means the signal has been sent. I think the uh, upshot would depend on what exactly mm. would be done with Dan. I think he has so much talent that it would be useful. I think, for instance, it's especially important that His Excellency took on mm. recently. Uh, there are some people who thought he shouldn't, but he took up the chairmanship of the Group of 15, which I think is a very important body in the world, or potentially very important and very respectful. Late of advised as well. Sorry? He was late in the advice of taking the chairpersonship on. I well, think. I think he was very happy to take it, and of right. course the respect in which he is held is perhaps important for Sri Lanka at this point to renew its old concerns. Now, that perhaps is a role that Dan could play. I think what we need to look forward to is the use made of talent wherever it is. Sure. And taken together with that, of course, is the way the president will be moving forward on these issues. I think it's particularly important to recognize, to go back to the 13th Amendment and devolution, uh, something that is not really recognized often enough, and may I recommend my book, Political Principles and Their Practice in Sri Lanka. That is a marketing I, pitch. Have you sure. read it? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've not read it. Why? But, but I'm sure the audiences now will rush out and buy the book. No, but <laughs> my real problem about, about, say, I'm sorry to go back to CPA because I know that's not, you know, you have other persons. No, but I want to move on from the debate. But can I go back to this? No, but I want to touch on something I'm that sorry, is quite... I'm sorry, but I'd like to finish talking about political principles. But I want practice. to touch on something that is quite... Well, you can do it after I finish. Certainly. Let me just tell you that the whole history of devolution, from the liberal point of view, is part of the people. We also recognize that security concerns are often involved, and that is contextual. 
when you have security problems, you then need to make sure that the centre does not feel threatened. Roger, we, we but having said that, we understand the thirteen. I mean, the debate I think is is alive. Yeah, with, I think with we opinion. must help our audiences. But okay, carry on. <laughs> but, but, okay, okay but if you don't want to let me finish, <laughs> but I your want mercy. to move on okay. because we're running short of time to the issue of language because you have been a champion uh, of, of, a, of a, not just a bilingualism but in terms of, of, of training our civil uh, uh, servants with, with Tamil 